Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna answer the all important question, how much electricity is enough to kill you? Now I phrased that question in a way to kind of elicit the biggest response, but really the question is, how safe is electricity and how much electricity is enough to be harmful to you? Obviously we're trying to avoid a fatal situation, but we also want to know how much electricity is enough to hurt us and how concerned we need to be with the electricity around us, which is typically the electricity found in your home or office, which is typically only 120 volts AC and possibly in your home you might go as high as 240 volts AC. You may also uh, have access to things that are typically, you know, a few volts when it comes to a battery up to about 12 volts, which is commonly found in your vehicle. Unless you have some other kind of strange battery loads in your home, like possibly a power wall or something else, a battery backup possibly for a solar system, then you're really not gonna see any voltages above 12 volts typically when it comes to DC. Now you do need to understand a little bit the terms of, that are used to describe electricity before you can understand how they affect your body. Now the first term is voltage, which we've talked about a little bit before when we talked about detecting voltage in your home. And voltage is the amount of potential that exists between two points. The old saying when it comes to electrocution is that, you know, it's not the voltage that kills you, it's the amperage. And that's true in the sense that it's not the amount of uh, potential between two points that's dangerous, it's how much electricity would flow, which is the current flow or amperage, and it's the flow of electricity through your body that can be harmful or fatal, not so much the potential. You could have a very high potential voltage source, uh, but if there isn't the ability for the current to flow at a very high magnitude, then it's not going to be as dangerous. Something like a taser can really uh, seem to create quite an effect in your body. It uses a much higher voltage than what you'd find around your home, but at a low amperage, so it's a safe potential. That's a very important distinction. However, it is important to know that power, which is the overall amount of electricity as we talk about it, just like we'd say that how much power is consumed in your home in a month, well, power is a function of both voltage and current. So when you talk about uh, you know, a shock that you might get at 50 volts versus a shock that you might get 100 volts, if you were to apply you know, the electric potential at the same point in your body, but with two different amounts of voltage, you're going to get a higher current flow in the one with a higher voltage, which is going to hurt more or do more damage. So voltage and current are related to each other. So understanding the difference is important. The amount of current that flows is really what's going to affect how much it hurts or how much damage is done. And the voltage is a factor in that. So why is electricity harmful to people or to even to animals? And the answer for that is because our bodies use a lot of electrical signals in order to function. You know, without getting too deep into the biology of it all, every time a muscle moves in our body, there's actually an electrical signal being sent to tell that muscle to contract. You know, basically every time, you know, a muscle is moving, you're also getting a contraction, you're getting a release or a signal that's sent electrically through your body. Also, the way that we feel pain and communicate that pain to our brain and let it know that we're in danger is also through the firing of nerves. And that's also a process that uses electric uh, communication. The combination of those two things, the uh, miscommunication of electrical sing signals to cause that contraction of the muscle, and also the pain of all of those nerve endings firing is what caused most of the discomfort and stress when electric current or electrocution happens in a body. The other problem is with enough voltage and enough current flowing through, there's actually tissue damage as well as that tissue breaks down under the flow of electricity. So those three things together, you know, your nerves uh, firing and giving that painful sensation, the muscles contracting and tissue damage in more extreme situations, those are the three factors that cause electricity to be harmful to a body. So how much electricity 
does it take to cause that to happen? Generally, the accepted minimum amount that could be fatal or very harmful to you is actually only 100 milliamps or 0.1 of an amp. Now, most electrical circuits in your home can handle at least 15 amps before the breaker would be triggered to start shutting down that circuit. So you can imagine that when current is flowing through your body, the breaker is not going to prevent that from being harmful to you. However, the most dangerous place for this little bit of current to flow is across your vital organs. And that's of course because if it crosses your heart, it can disrupt the rhythm of your heart and prevent it from contracting normally as it would to pump blood throughout your system. Also, the rest of your vital organs can also be affected by those electrical pulses and it could cause them to stop functioning properly. Any one of those stops working properly, and of course, because they're vital to your health and survival, it could cause you know, major issues in your body and possibly even death. The reason you get a shock in the first place is because your body is creating a short circuit between the intended path the electricity is supposed to take in a receptacle or switch or circuit in your home, and instead it's directing that through the part of your body that is connected to the circuit, the part that is connecting the circuit together and causing the electricity to flow. So if I was to poke my finger into an exposed uh, electrical box and contact uh, between two points, that's let's say 120 volts in, in my house, where is the electricity going to flow? Well, it's not gonna flow through my entire body, it's just gonna flow through those two points where my finger contacted. Possibly I touched the terminal with the tip of my finger and the side of the metal box with the edge of my finger. So the electricity is only gonna flow between these two points. Of course, because I don't have any vital organs in that uh, short distance, I'm not in danger of causing a heart attack or any other kind of organ failure. I, and it's mostly going to be a harmless, if maybe slightly painful, a shock that I receive. So it's important to realize that if you have a single point of contact like that in most types of electricity, there isn't a way for a fatal injury to occur. If I was to you know, poke that into a light switch or you know, anywhere else just using one finger, most of the time that isn't going to be very harmful. Like I said, you can get a painful shock, but that's about it. Because electricity causes you to contract your muscles, if you were to grab something that created that short circuit, it would cause your hand to contract around that and be very difficult for you to let go. So because you can't let go, that shock is going to keep getting administered and it's going to be enough that it's, it's going to cause current to flow for enough time that it could have a greater effect on your body. That's why electricians, if they're going to reach for something that they're not sure is live or not, just to be safe, they would approach it with the back of their hand so that if they touched it, it would cause their hand to contract and pull away from that thing instead of grab on and latch on really hard. So what if you stick a fork in a toaster or bend the tines and insert it into a receptacle? Are you at risk of dying? Well, it's possible that it creates a nasty flash and either melts whatever you've uh, inserted into it or causes the breaker to trip. The reason for that is whatever you've inserted there is most likely to be metal and the metal conducts electricity creating a short circuit path with very little resistance and allows a lot of amperage to flow. Most of the danger from that will not be of electrocution, but it would be of sparks or bright light that's released from that surge of electricity through that metal object, which could create a flash of electricity, an arc flash we call it, or could release enough heat that it could burn you. It's not a smart idea to do, but it isn't really much of a risk to cause electrocution. So the same thing goes for almost anything that you would contact when it comes to electricity in your home. If you were to reach a hand across it, most of the time the only part that's going to be affected is whatever you contacted it with. If you bumped it with your arm or with a foot or whatever, you're not going to do damage or concern to your entire body just to the part that you put in the way of, those, of that voltage potential. Now, the one exception to that would be that if you were standing in a maybe a wet basement or something like that and you touched an electric outlet, what could happen then is that you're gonna 
touch the outlet, but because your home is grounded to the earth and the basement, sometimes a wet concrete especially, it can cause uh, a grounding effect there, which would mean that the electricity would flow from where you touched it in your fingers through your arm down into your feet, in which case that could actually go through your organs, which are on the way in that path. So that is a way that you could have uh, electricity flow through your entire body in your home. So you just need to be careful. Water and electricity typically don't mix. So if you're standing in a puddle, that's not the time to go poking around in anything electrical. Another common electrical hazard when it comes to shocking or electrocution is the idea that something that is plugged in near a sink or a bathtub could have water pour on it and create a short circuit that could be dangerous to the person using it. That's the reason that ground fault uh, receptacles are installed near water. And that's so that if you were to leave something plugged in and it was to be dumped in the water and it would create a short circuit, it would shut off very quickly. The amount of current required to turn off a ground fault circuit interrupter is as low as 10 milliamps or 0.01 amps. And that's made so sensitive to avoid those kinds of hazards. Now, if you threw something in that was from a regular receptacle into water, most cases it's still going to trip the breaker. It just could be a little more dangerous in that moment before the breaker trips. If someone was to contact it and contact something that was grounded at the same time, it could cause electricity to flow. So yes, there's a potential hazard there. It's for a very brief moment until the breaker trips, but in most cases, it's protected by the ground fault circuit interrupter receptacles, and it's not as big of a hazard or uh, as much of a fatal issue as you might think from watching a movie or TV show. Also on this vein of thought is that if you were to reach out and contact through both of your hands, so you reach touch one contact with this hand and another contact with this hand, and it completes the circuit, you're once again causing electricity to flow from one hand all the way through the body and into the other hand. That's probably the most dangerous situation, even though the amount of voltage and current is the same as if you just stuck one finger in there. But by having the complete circuit flow through your body, especially through your chest and through possibly your heart, that's where the most potential damage is for you to have you know, a heart uh, problem, a heart attack, or something else that's caused by that flow of electricity more than just how much voltage or current is there. Overall in your home, almost all uh, contact with electricity is going to be through a hand or through fingers, you know, something that you stepped on or touched that you know, was live when you didn't expect it to be. The voltages used in your home are intentionally on the lower end so that they're not going to be as dangerous. Anything that's under about 24 volts, you wouldn't even feel a shock from. I know this from experience, 24 volts is about the lowest voltage I've ever felt even a little bit of a tingle. When it comes to something like a 12 volt battery in your car, you could even touch both terminals and it wouldn't be enough voltage to overcome the barrier of potential that exists on your skin. The outer layers of your skin have quite a high resistance and so they would prevent voltage from flowing even on a source like a 12 volt battery. One of the things people might wonder about is their car battery and it being super dangerous, but those two terminals, you could touch them and it won't cause electricity to flow through a body. And the main reason for that is just like I say, the voltage is not a high enough potential to overcome the barrier of a skin that is touching it. Car batteries, however, are able to pass a large amount of current. So if you were to short circuit the terminals by placing something metal across them, you're going to get a large amount, maybe even a thousand amps transfer between those terminals, which would create a lot of heat and possibly melt uh, whatever you've placed across the terminals. That flash that's created could also be dangerous because it releases a lot of heat and a lot of light, which could cause burns, uh, blindness, other things like that. So when you're using batteries, especially car batteries or RV batteries, be sure to make sure those terminals are covered whenever they're not needing to be exposed and then just make sure that you're keeping metal tools away from those contacts. Now, when it comes to household batteries, things like AA batteries, uh, AAA, C, D cells, whatever household batteries you use, those do not have a high enough voltage in order to really overcome 
that barrier potential of your skin and it's not going to allow you to receive a shock. If you've ever put a nine volt battery across your tongue, the reason why you can feel a little bit of a tingle with that, because your tongue is wet, there's a low resistance there and there's an ability for those uh, taste buds, which are very sensitive to electrical impulses, to feel a, a sour taste and maybe a bit of a tingle. That's not harmful, it's just something that exists even at that low voltage. Generally speaking, in your home, is there enough electricity there to kill you? Yes, I would say in an ideal circumstance, there is. But it's kind of the same thing as asking, can a sandwich kill you? Because eating a sandwich could cause you to choke and die, but the likelihood of that happening is quite low. So are we going to approach every sandwich as though it's possibly an, a life-ending experience? No, I'm certainly not going to do that. But when it comes to electricity, it's a similar idea. Every time you plug something in is not a near-death experience, but if you were to use electricity unsafely, leaving wires exposed and handling them without any care or knowledge about what is safe and what isn't, you could produce an environment where there is a shock that is harmful or fatal. Also, if you approach something in a way that will prevent your muscles from releasing or would cause them to clamp onto whatever you've grabbed, that's the kind of thing that could produce prolonged exposure to electricity and be harmful. So the long and the short of the situation is, if you treat electricity in a way that's safe, you're probably not going to run much of a risk, especially for the, any of the electrical sources that you would find within your home. I hope that answers the question. And if you've got other questions, feel free to leave a comment below letting me know or send me an email. Check me out on Twitter, at BoldGuyDIY. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends and family. I really appreciate it. It's something that I enjoy making and I hope I can share some knowledge with you that I've picked up over the years. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, don't be afraid to be balder.